The Towers of Hanoi, a famous problem that has applications in computer science, mathematics, and everyday life. So the whole idea of this problem is that we're trying to move a set of disks. Now, some might have a smaller radius and some might have a larger radius. Now, suppose we have a given sample of disks and there are a set of disks and then you have three poles and you want to move from the first pole all the way to the last pole, keeping the, the second most pole as an intermediary pole, a parking spot. So our job is to move the pile of disks from tower one all the way to tower three, keeping tower two as an intermediary tower. Okay, so we have two exceptions here and we have two rules for um, moving the disks. One of the exceptions is that only one disk at a time. So you can't move multiple disks and only have to go one by one. So after that, you need another rule over here is that anytime we have a pile of disks, they must be in ascending order. All right. So ascending means that the smallest one should be on the top and the biggest one should be on the bottom. Now you could understand this more clearly if I show you a graphical representation of this. So a graphical representation of the towers of Hanoi is that we have three rods. You have one rod over here, th two, and then three. Now this is a front pole, with pole, two pole. Um, the names for these, you could call this tower one, tower two, tower three, or you could just call it ABC, whatever you would like to do. And then we have these a uh, set of disks so you can see this is the bottom most one which is the biggest and then you have a one that is a little smaller and then smallest at the top so you can only stack them in this ascending order pattern and you can't do the other way around so that's one of the rules and the other rule is that you can only go one at a time now our mission is to get from this point we have to go here on this place to pole this is our final location all right so we i have this computer simulated version of the towers of hanoi and notice I got a link to of a website, so it's transom.org. So I'm going to embed this link in over in my description so you could check this website out. I also have another one that I'm going to be showing later on. So what is this basically is a simulated version of how we're going to expect how to do this. So we have a start, we have a free parking, which is the middle one, and then we have a finish. Like Just like in the other case, we had tower one, tower two, tower three, three rods. So what we have to do is that I have to place this to the last one. So I just place it over here and now you can see that I won. So claim your trophy for completing this. So I just uh, puzzle I completed. Now I go to the level two. Now increasing the number of, now it's gonna get a little more challenging and then you have to find the algorithm to this. So what is this basically is that this one is smaller and this one is bigger. So what I could do is I could put this in my parking space. I could get the last one and now notice that number of moves are changing. So I got one. Now I go and put this in the finish location. I have two now over here. Now if I put this one on the top of this, now you can see that this is complete and it took me a total of three moves to complete this process. The first one took me just one move to complete. So when I had one disc, it just took me one move. When I had two discs, it took me three moves. Interesting. Now suppose I have three discs. Now this is another website and I'm also gonna embed this in over in my description. It's math, mathisfun.com and or matsisfun.com, whatever. So over here, I'm gonna have three discs. And what I wanna do is I wanna place it into my final. Now over here, you can see the minimum moves that are required is seven. Now you could I could take longer, I could take, but I can't take shorter. It's, it's not physically possible. This is the, like, the, the least it could get. So how I could do this is basically, let's place this um, first one into intermediary, all right? And then after that, I have this second one and I said move is one now. So I got my second move and I place this middle one to the last pole, all right? Now that I have done that, I could place this single one to the first one over here. Okay, gone. Now th moves are three. Now I could place this one over to this location right here. Okay, now moves are four. Now I could place this one on the top of this. Okay, now moves are five. Now the last one could go over here where I wanted it to go. So now I could go back over here and now I could go and place this one over here and I could put this one on the top. Now you can see that I took nine moves to do it. I could, now that is a long process. I could have done it in five, seven moves. I could have a better approach to this. So let's have a better approach. Let me restart this and now let's do a different way. So what we're gonna do is basically have the first one which is gonna be in the last pole. This is gonna be in the second pole and now I'm gonna put this one in the uh, middle one, this one in the last one. I'm gonna put this one over here 
I'm going to put this one over here, and now I'm going to put the sing last one over here. Now you can see that I took seven moves, and that is the best. So well done, I completed it. Um, yeah, so this is one of the ways, and uh, that's how we're going to do it. So you could understand that how many times it took. It took seven. So for one disc, it took me one move. For two discs, it took me three moves. And when it came to three discs, it took me seven moves. Now we're seeing a pattern here. It's growing exponentially. Now we could say it could grow two raised to the power of n, but it's minus one. Because if I'm talking about three, uh, two raised to the power three is eight, but I'm getting seven. Now if I talk about four discs, I'm gonna get two raised to the power of four, which is 16, but I'm not gonna get 16, I'm gonna get minus one, and that is 15. Now, the other thing that is behind this is that um, during one process, like for instance, we're having the three, do you notice that I basically called my previous um, process, which was the the Towers of Hanoi uh, when I had to calculate the one, I mean the second one. So like what I'm talking about here is that once I did this, look, so basically uh, I'm in my third, so I have n is equal to three. I'm solving it, but I have to solve n is equal to two before. So notice how I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And this is actually how we did the n is equal to 2 process. We just put that one in the last position. And you can see, this is my n is equal to 2 completed right there. Awesome. Now the only process I have to do is put this last disk, the, f the biggest one, from the first to the last disk. So over here. That's my done. And now I call my n is equal to 2 process once again. So I'm in my n is equal to 3. I told you this. Now what I do is basically I put this one back. I put this one over here and I put this one in the last. So what I could do is basically I had to delegate authority and I had to call my previous function and I had to do it two times. And then what I had to do is basically in the middle of the process, I just had to flip or maybe place my last disk, which was on the bottom from the first to the last tower. So that was basically it. And that's how we're going to implement this algorithm. So let's go in a programming aspect of this problem. So now I'm over here in my VS Code IDE and I'm just going to start by creating a new file. So I'm going to call it TOH, Towers of Hanoi, .cpp, the extension. Okay, so I'm going to write the code to this. How am I going to solve this? So I hash include input output stream. All right, so this is my header file. And then we have the namespace standard. All right, and then we have the integer main. And then we also have the return zero. Now notice that I'm using a function and I'm gonna use functional programming here. So I'm gonna call one function here. The, fu the function that I'm gonna be using is called a move function and it doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't have to return anything. So I'm just gonna be calling it as void return. Nothing has to return. So mo uh, the, the function name is move. And what I'm gonna give is that basically I'm gonna give three arguments and uh, essentially, you know that we have three um, places over here. So we have a tower um, one, and then we have the tower two, and then we have the tower three. But even after that, I have to specify how, what are the number of the disks. So like the count of the disks. So I need four arguments to be exact. So let's have an argument over here called count. Let's have a character over here just to represent uh, which one I'm talking about. So I'm just say start. And then I have to have a character here and it's just gonna be the last one, all right? So I have to tell it from here to the last location. So I would say start and then I would say finish right here. So finish. And then after ha that, I have to tell me, I mean, I have to tell where my parking spot is or my temporary place. So I would say car character temporary, right? Right inside of the definition, what we could do is include our implicit base case. So our implicit base case is gonna be is gonna be pretty simple because I'm basically gonna keep on doing this until the count reaches minus one. I mean, it reaches zero. So basically I'm just gonna keep on going count minus one, count minus one. I'm gonna call my previous functions as we saw how the process was done like in the representation what I showed and also in the game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply my base case as if I would say count is equal to zero. So I'm just basically gonna do is I'm gonna return and I'm gonna return just that. And after that, I'll just put it else and I'm gonna perform my operation. Here we're gonna call the move function again. So we're using recursion. And now what we're gonna do is basically now it's gonna be count minus one. Now initially that you saw that the position started changing. Now our start will be the same thing, right? 
the start will be the same thing but now the the temporary will be our finished place so remember i had the uh the thing done in my temporary location like i could show you over here that i had it over done over here like when I completed my n is equal to two process, I called it back, so I'd use recursion, and it was placed over here in the middle. So I'm gonna go from here as my start, my finish will be over here, and my temporary will be this, instead of having this like this. So basically start, and then this is known as temporary, and this is known as final, but now, uh, if I'm talking about n is equal to minus one, when I'm using recursion, this is gonna be my finish, and this is gonna be my temporary. So just to explain that, I'm gonna have start, and then I'm gonna have the temporary as my finish and I'm gonna have the the last one which is also the known as um, finish as my temporary location so I'm just gonna have that right there so now after that I'm gonna have to display one more prompt because remember I said that I had one last one over here remaining a last I would say the bottom most disk remaining over here my first one and I just had to move that in a single step to the last one that process is going to repeat in every sequence so I'm just going to explicitly do that move so I'm just going to say console output and I'm going to say let's say move disk so I'm going to say move disk and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the count of that disk because now we're going to tell which disk are we talking about and then we say from and then we have um, start which is the location of the start so let's say from this start and then we say two and then we have um, all the way to the finish location so we say finish and then we have uh, just to make it a little more clear just with the period and let's have an end line as well okay so this was the thing that was the last instruction so I would say one instruction uh, uh, the, for the last disk so for the last disk right there so after that now we have to use one more of this because remember I uh, when we did over here we had this process here in the middle and we use that same process meaning uh, now we have to place the middle so was our start and we had to place it in the final and our temporary was now gonna be the start one I hope that made sense so what I'm gonna do is basically have move again and I'm gonna use count minus one but now I'm going to change my locations. Now the start will be the one in the middle. So the one in the middle was temporary. So that's my start. And now I'm going to change it up. So I'm going to say my finish is going to be the last one. And the start will be my temporary one. And now what I could do in my main function is basically go in my main. And in my main logic, what I'm going to write is basically an n. I'm going to say enter um, the number of disks or whatever. So let's say enter the count of there's um, disks over here so just gonna do that and now we're gonna have the number inside of it so I'll say n over here and now let's call or invoke the function so I'm just gonna say move and we now what we need is the count so we just put the n over here we put the prop one over here so I'll just put a I put B as my second one and I put C as my third one so there is C over here so now I'm what I'm gonna basically do is that you can see that uh, I didn't do it correct let me just uh, repeat that again so now I'm gonna invoke my function so I'm gonna say move I'm gonna say the count which is n I'm gonna do my start location which is a now I can see that the last location was C so I'm gonna do that and my uh, middle location was gonna be B so that's that if I save this code now you can see that start was here a finish was C and the temporary is B and that's how I named them you can name them whatever you want let's run this code to see how it plays so let's run this code and you can see over here um, it's running so it asked me enter the number of disks so what I'm gonna say is gonna say let's say one because we just want to see how it's gonna work so it says move disk one um, and it says from A to C so that's cool because we just had one disk and we had to move it one process that was correct how about having two disks? So let me run this code again. And now it says the count of disks. Now, I remember I told you that two disks take how much times? It takes two raised to the power two, which was four, but now minus one will take three times. So let's see. Move disk one from A to B, awesome. Okay, now A, now move disk two from A to C. Okay, that's cool. And now we have move disk one from B to C. And that's it. So that was, taking three times now if I run this code one more time and check for the third location so let's see three 
Now we're going to have a process of seven like we just did in this game. We're going to have the process, the same thing is just going to tell me the instructions now. How cool is that? That's the beauty, that's the magic of recursion. So let's see. Awesome. So we have move disk one from A to C. That was done. Then we have move disk two from A to B. Then we have move disk one from C to B. So let me just implement this in my game. So let's, let's go over here in my game. And I have my VS code over here. So I have my output over here. So I'm going to refresh this game. So let's restart this game. And let's, um, let's use this. So I'm just going to place this in over here. And I'm going so to start right here. So let's go from disk one. And this one is the smallest one. And what we have to do is we place it in the C, C location. Awesome. Now we go. Basically what's happening is that it's going to call the previous n is equal to 2 function. And that's what it's going to implement. So, so disk 2, this is the one, is going to be placed to the B location. Awesome. Now we have this disk 1 from which was in the C. Now it goes to B. So okay, that's done. Now we have disk 3 which is in A, it goes to C. So I'm going to place it over here. Okay. Now we have uh, disk 1 from B to A. So disk 1 is over here and we have to go from B to A. Awesome. Now we have B, uh, disk 2 from B to C. So B to C. Okay, now you can see the moves are six. And we have one that last move over here. And you can see over here, six moves and the last one is seven. So disc one from A to C. How magical that was. That was amazing. So this is the beauty, the true beauty of recursion. There are so many other applications of recursions out there in the world, in the mathematics and in computer science. I hope you like this video. If, you really, if, if it really helped you guys, uh, please let me know in the comment sections. And if you had any questions related to this video, and do also let me know. Uh, that's it with the video um, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.